email definitely is not dead. You know, at this point, we're doing about three to five million dollars a month in email revenue for our clients. Look, it's funny you you, you called me a paid media marketer. Um, look, the truth is, and you and I kind of kind of spoke about this a, a while back. Is I think email is one of the most underrated parts of marketing. Or if we're talking e-commerce for a second, the only thing that makes me happier than return on ad spend is repeat customer rate and lifetime value. So I get really frustrated when people say email's dead or email marketing's dead. So two-parter for you. First part, is email marketing dead? Let's solve this once for all. And number two, why is it that like it just doesn't get the glory of other marketing channels when it's free? Like we're not talking about putting tens of thousands or hundred thousand dollars into ad spend here, right? We're talking about free money. Yeah, on part one, man, that headline drives me bonkers. I swear every, every year on January 2nd and January 3rd, all these massive publishers post this large article and piece about how email's dead and they just want to, it's, it's clickbait to me, right? At this point, it is so overdone and it, it, people buy into it, which really is terrible, right? That's, I think that's the massive problem is that these people say it, so therefore it must be true. And I've really kind of gone on the stance of like, let's prove that it's wrong by really just putting the numbers out there that we're doing for our clients and having full transparency. I think that piece has been really important to helping convince prospects and clients and either also other agencies and people in this space that they shouldn't be sleeping on email. So email definitely is not dead. You know, at this point, we're doing about three to $5 million a month in email revenue for our clients. And to the second point, like it's, it is so profitable, but for whatever reason, it's not sexy, right? Like there's no really massive names in email, right? You've got Ezra and you've got other people that have done a pretty good job becoming cornerstone of the industry but it's not like you know you jason and, and nick shackleford and the other people that have a lot of attention kind of in the media buying world um because that's what all everyone seems to care about the clients that are smart enough to invest into email are the ones that are going to have so much more money to reinvest back into the top of the funnel right so it's almost like oh you guys are all obsessed with top of the funnel like why don't you do this small email thing on the side why don't you convert subscribers and customers you already have and they'll give you more money to go do whatever the heck you want to do. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to saying, right, in sales, what, what's the easier sale? The people who have already bought from you already yes. or trying to get new people to buy? So, I mean, what percentage would you say from an e-commerce point of view should revenue be attributed to email? Yeah, so we have clients that have anywhere from literally 10% all the way up to like 60 or even 70% of the revenue coming from email. If I had to take the 35 or 40 clients that we're working with, on average, I'd say about 20 to 30% of these brands' revenue is coming from email. So, you know, if you're at five or 10%, you know, there, there's an opportunity for you to two, three, four X your revenue from email. You know, if you're at 20, 30%, don't settle, right? Like, how can you go from 20 or 30 to 40, right? So, so that's kind of my, my stance, my take is you should aim for 20 to 30, but don't settle once you get there. So when people listening to this are like, okay, cool, I'm going to start emailing people that makes sense. It's free. It's like, I got them already. What are the mistakes you see people making? Cause I'm pretty sure most people are going to go run emails and they're just not going to get that type of return or returns aren't going to be as high. And they're going to be like, man, told you email was dead. Uh, it, it doesn't work. So what are the mistakes you're seeing most people make? So I think the biggest mistake, and I understand why people kind of get stuck on this is they in their mind, they think logically that sending to every single person on their list, whether that person signed up 10 years ago or yesterday, is the right move. Um, and I can see why people think that, right? They think that if you hit the most number of people on your list, oh, therefore the most people are going to open, the most people are going to buy, right? That increases your chances. That's actually the wrong way of thinking about it. And that's probably why I'd say 90, 95% of companies have deliverability issues. And to explain deliverability, it's basically the number of emails that get delivered to the inbox, right? And the inbox is comprised of a primary folder. That's the best folder to be in. They have like the promotions folder, the social folder, and you've got the dreaded spam folder, right? So when you're just bashing and blasting to everyone on your list, there's a good chance that you're going to be in all those folders named, right? Um, the best way to try to hit the primary inbox and at the very least the promotions is by sending emails to people that want to hear from you. So that's someone that's been engaged over a 30 day period, maybe a 60 day period, maybe a 90 day period. For every business, depending on how often and how frequently they send, that engage window changes. So for example, to kind of break that down further, Jason, if you had an e-commerce business and you were sending every single day, 
you might want to leverage a 30 day or a 45 day engage because you've given people 30 chances or 45 chances to open and they haven't, right? So if they haven't opened or clicked or purchased, you want to stop sending to those people over that window of time. But Jason, if your business is sending maybe two times a week, maybe three times a week, maybe once a month, you know, less frequently, you could expand that out to, you know, a 90 day, a 120 day engage because these people have had less chances to engage with you. So you want to give them enough time, right? Maybe in the month of May, right? For me, I just had a baby five weeks ago. Maybe for May, I wasn't a great email opener because I was consumed with something else. So if I only received three emails, you wouldn't want to prevent me from receiving them, right? So that's kind of how I think about the biggest mistake is batching and blasting to everyone, where in fact, you should be sending to your engaged. What about messaging? Does messaging change depending on where they fall into that list? Yeah, so um, messaging throughout the whole customer life cycle, throughout whether they're engaged or not engaged, really differs. Um, so you want to speak differently to someone that's a subscriber that's never purchased um, as, as it compares to someone that's purchased um, already, right? So someone that hasn't purchased that's new to your list, you want to send them like a welcome series, maybe three, four, five emails over the course of a week or two weeks that really educates and nurtures them about your brand. You know, Jason, why is the brand that you built matter? How are you different from competitors? What kind of quality standards do you take to ensure you know, this product is the best? Um, so you want to speak to someone that's new as if they're new, kind of have to start from scratch, got to start from day zero. Whereas if someone has made a purchase already, they already have enough confidence and trust in your brand already. So you want to move to Jason, thank you so much for your purchase. This means so much to me. Um, while you're waiting for your order, here's X, Y, and Z, right? These are the things that you should know, um, et cetera. So yeah, depending on whether someone's bought or not bought, um, we'll have different messaging, depending on whether someone's engaged versus unengaged, you'll have different messaging. So engaged people, you know, can be more casual, can kind of be more fun, more comedic for people that are engaged. It's kind of like, Hey, you know, is something wrong? Is there anything we can do to, to help you? You know, we'd hate to see you leave, right? It's kind of more of that, like serious kind of somber, more professional type thing. And again, you can have comedy there as well. But that's kind of at a high level, how we think about that. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want, check out our most recent video over here. And this one is the one YouTube thinks you'll like. But if you really enjoyed watching, please do me a favor, like and subscribe over here. Thank you so much.